Let me finish. This is the first time I committed a hate crime. Maybe they'll jerk my dick off <laughs> or you know, like something like that. Yeah, probably. We've discussed it. I'm a sociopath. <laughs> Put it in the trash can. Your worst friend. You want to know why you're all fucked up? Just look at the fucking bums you hang around with. You're listening to Your Worst Friend with Shane and Matt. I'm Matt, and I'm joined today by my band co-host, my friend. My partner in this, though, if he keeps getting kicked off, I may have to boot him for someone else. Shane. Yo, what's up, you fucking buttholes? Uh, I was going to put a bleep in there. I was hoping you would just leave it blank so we can make it seem like you're being canceled again. Why are you being canceled? Bleep all this out. Why are you being canceled? Well, I'm not so much being canceled. It's just that my free speech is getting shit all over and (laughs) kicked around in the gutter. (laughs) Go to yourworstfriend.com to get links to everything we do. Follow us everywhere on social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Worst Friend Cast. Go subscribe to our YouTube page at Worst Friend Cast for our comedy show and our interviews. Make sure you check out our Friends of the Show page at yourworstfriend.com. And if you want a shirt or stickers or any other kind of merch, there's links to all of our merch up at yourworstfriend.com. And most importantly, our Patreon patreon.com slash worst friend cast where you get the following benefits for only one dollar a month and you can cancel at any time every episode ever recorded entirely commercial free along with a bonus episode every week that's patreon.com slash worst friend cast and there's links to that up at your worst friend.com now look you're gonna say you don't care but it kind of sucks, right? No, it sucks. Okay, so I remember... Um, well, I guess we should tell them what it is, though. Well, okay, I got kicked off Instagram for being fucking baller, right? Too funny. Yeah, just so fucking cool. I didn't... Um, so I, I, I send you, like, some funny shit, but I, I didn't send you any um, screenshots lately because I have been in so many, like, just constant back and forths with people. Um and and my whole thing is like I don't want to say more than like one or two sentences. Um, you, they can like type and type and type, and if there's grammar like and punctuation and shit, I'll I'll attempt to get through it. But at a certain point, I don't want to waste time, and that's something I've gotten to over time in my life. So at a certain point, like maybe after three to five back and forths, if somebody's dense or being an asshole. I uh, I'm happy to just like be like, all right, I don't want to talk anymore. You can, you can be the winner if you want. And then they'll like keep talking back. They'll keep on antagonizing me, antagonizing me. And I'll just give them like one word answers like, okay, cool. All right. Thanks. You know, like just very like passive aggressive. I don't engage past a certain point because it's not worth it. Um, so the fact that I'm banned is really shocking to me. Because I really, like, I personally got to a point in my life where it's like, okay, I'm going to draw a line. and I'm not going to go past that line anymore. So I used to be way worse on the internet, you know? Sure. But, but getting to the point where I would get way worse, it took a lot of time. It was getting me fired up. You had to get me real riled up to get there, you know? And I don't want to get to that point anymore. So I just I don't even get to the point where I can say stuff that I feel should get me banned. So the fact that I am, that's the most irritating part is that it was so unexpected. You know, it's like if if I had posted a picture of my fucking butthole and then put a filter on it to kind of disguise the fact that it was my butthole, mm-hmm. maybe it would look like a cloud or something, mm-hmm. um, then then I would be like, oh, well. Like when I woke up and got banned, then I would be like, oh, it's probably the butthole picture, you know, probably a picture of my butthole that I filtered. But I woke up and saw that I was banned for bullying slash harassment. 
And I was like, what the fuck is this shit? You know, like it, it's almost like when you're accused of something you didn't do. That's what really irks me about it is that I they didn't even tell me what the specific reason is, but they called me a bully. And I just got done doing an episode the other day about how I'm not a bully. And so that's a fucking makes me want to bully somebody, <laughs> which that episode, I think, will be coming out next week. Um, but you're right. Uh, I have one exchange that you sent me. Would you mind if I read it to the audience? Oh, go here? for it. OK, um, I'm assuming you were fighting with someone Christian because they're throwing a lot of Christian shit in here. Maybe. Yeah, I don't. I mean, you can say it's fighting. I don't really consider a lot of it fighting. Uh, just, I mean, disagreeing, having an uh, open conversation. I mean, a lot of the times I am just r- ruffling other people's feathers because I know that we're talking past each other you, at a certain point. Are you trolling to an extent? Yeah. Okay. Um, but I'm not – I don't start there. I never really start there. Um, maybe I'll ask a question sarcastically or something, but – I don't get to the point where I'm I'm like uh, I'm like playing dumb or playing ignorant and being like, oh God, who's that? You know, I don't I don't start there usually. Okay. Usually, well, what I have here is uh, someone named Mister Noticer One Two Three, who may have been the one that reported you. We don't know, which is kind of shitty. It's like getting a test back and them not telling you which answers you got wrong, mm. like when they ban you. Yeah, or or you you get a restraining order in the mail, and they're like, "But yeah, we can't tell you who it's against. <laughs> Just stay in your house. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we can't tell you who it's against. Stay in your home." You want to know the gender? No, no, <laughs> no. We don't know the gender either. We're not going to presume. Um, all right. So they responded to whatever you said. Uh, you're miserable, and it's gratifying to see, which is not very Christian of them. Yeah, it's very, very. Uh, I mean, it's rude, but yeah, it's very un Jesusy, right? Like, yeah, I feel like he wants all his kids to be up in paradise, sucking on God's titties. <laughs> so he says, "You're miserable, and it's gratifying to see Christus Vicit, uh, Christus Imperat, and Christus Ragnat." Which now you went to Catholic school? What's that mean? I went to Catholic school, and I took four years of Latin. <laughs> uh, Christ wins. Christ, well, you know, I'm going to take guesses here. Uh, Christ wins. Christ something and Christ is the ruler. Let's Google it. Let's see. Christ Prob- is- middle one's probably like Christ is the compass or the protractor. Christ is Victor meaning. All right, let's see. Uh, Christ conquers. Christ reigns. Christ commands. Okay. Man, Christ sounds like kind of a warlord dick. Yeah, dude, he sounds like kind of like more like what uh, the Islam guys think <laughs> of when it comes to God than uh, than what I would think of the Christian one. I thought the Christian one was all hippie like, like, oh, dudes, we should love each other in this garden. And then I thought the Islam guy was like, oh, sword and fucking cut your head off. But it's starting to sound more like the Christian one. Maybe we'll talk about chat GPT later. I know you don't like nerd shit, so I won't bring it up too much. But (laughs) I was fucking around with chat GPT. And I have to say, I did find it somewhat fair and balanced. I write I wrote, uh, tell me about Jesus. And um, there's a lot of examples online that are like, tell me a joke about Christians and chat GPT will make a joke about Christians. And then if you go, tell me a joke about Jews, chat GPT, which is like this AI generating. It's like a writing thing. It, it'll mm. write things for you. Again, we may have to do a whole episode on it. I don't know. But uh, there was a whole example of them like, tell me a joke about Christians and it'll tell you a joke about Christians. And then you go, tell me a joke about Jews. And it goes, no, this is inappropriate. We can't, <laughs> we can't do that. Or That's you funny. write, tell me a joke about Muslims. And it goes, no, 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 no. We don't about want blacks. Our, we don't want acid thrown in our faces. OK, <laughs> we, we're not going to do that. We're not trying to get hebbed out over here. So I <laughs> so I ask it, I say, hey, tell me a joke or tell me about Jesus. And it tells you who Jesus was. And it says, though. So uh, there's no proof he actually existed. Most historical scholars do believe he was a real man, blah, 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 blah. I'm, I'm looking at Jen and I'm like, watch, watch this thing pussy out when I ask it about Muhammad. OK, so mm-hmm. I go, tell me about Muhammad. And it tells the whole thing and it says he was a prophet and whatever and blah, 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 blah. And then at the end, it goes, though, 
There is no historical proof that Muhammad existed. Most historians or scholars or whatever agree that he probably was a real person. So yeah. it was pretty fair and balanced as, as it came to the Messiah. Well, that's good. So that. So this is more. Uh, it's about. It, it seems like it's really good at collecting and synthesizing data. That's right. All, yep. That's pretty yeah. much all it is. Um, so you would you would use this to write write like a term paper. You could, and that's part of the discussion. Um, mm. Cool. You know, we'll talk about it. But let me let me let me stick to your Instagram ban here because that's the topic of the day. I got so many messages from people going like, "Did Shane quit Instagram because he?" came out and he's gay and now he feels bullied and i was like well, no he didn't quit he is gay did he and he died did, bullied. did <laughs> shane get killed by a bunch of angry terrorists and i was like yeah maybe but like that's not why he's off instagram um did he get acid thrown in his face and then get raped by a pack of angry <laughs> never mind <laughs> So uh, he responded to you, whatever you said to him before, you're miserable and it's gratifying to see Christ conquers, Christ reigns, Christ commands. And you responded, you're hot and I'd love to eat your hair. <laughs> That's nice. That's a compliment. A Is com that bullying? No, I don't think so. I think you complimented him there. You let him know he, you find him attractive and you would, in fact, like to eat his hair, which I'd like to consume him, make him part of me. As we talked to a few weeks ago, I locked down my wife by saying, you know, I'd like to take you out to the woods and strangle you in white gloves like that's uh, romantic. Exactly. I think you even want to step before that. You went like the note passing. Do you like me? Yes or no. Except yours said, can I eat your hair? Yes or no. And he yeah, <laughs> I mean, it was a, it was it was like um, it was a, in a sense, it was like that, but it was more direct. Right. It was like when you go up to the the girl, you know, the day of prom and you're like, look, I know we don't know each other, but I just really wanted to ask you if you would go to prom with me because it's tonight and I know you're not going with anyone and I'm not going with anyone either and it's okay if you say no and then like maybe they say yes and you eat their hair, you know? <laughs> By the way, he has seven followers and he's following seven people. One of them is human garbage. I think you might have got tricked by a bot. Uh, Really? Okay. Oh, maybe not. Look, your boy follows him. Oh, cool. Oh, it might be his, it might be my boy's brother. What? Whatever. Really? Mm hmm. Oh, what a cunt. Oh. Yeah. You should have a talk or a fist fight. Anyway, he comments <laughs> back to you. A Christian should argue with a blasphemer only by running a sword through his bowels as far as it will go. And that was Oof. King Louis the Ninth. By the way, violent. you bring up hair eating. He lets you know, hey, how about I just stick a sword through your guts, right? How about I fucking kill you like this really good Christian who beheaded his wife? <laughs> so you write, please run your... <laughs> <laughs> you write, please run your sword deep into my bowels with a drooling face. <laughs> now, <'cause> like, <laughs> did you mean a literal sword, though? No, 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 no. Because, like, I mean, I assume... That's what he was alluding to, you know, like sword bowels, like uh, no one even owns swords anymore. Right. And everyone has bowels. Asian, so I just, Asian people and nerdy white guys who think they're Asian. Yeah. And but, black guys who think they're Asian. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's a growing de demographic. Yes, yeah. 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 Uh, which is a good thing, I think. Sure, uh, <laughs> sure, except for the cultural appropriation. But yeah, sure, absolutely. Yeah, they, those guys can steal from each other as long as we don't do they're it. They're marginalized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, those guys can uh, those guys can stay marginalized, and we'll stay homogenized. How about that? I agree. I that agree. was pretty fucking racist. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, so uh, if I what knew I what homogenized was, I would I would feel all, like. All, all the same and white. You oh, know? see, I white mixed it up pure. with pasteurized. I was like, yeah, oh, no. we're milk. Okay, go no, on. Past pasteurized is when you fucking take all the good stuff out of it that makes you fucking, you know, all the shit come out. Okay. <laughs> would you, you lick, know, and, would you lick that filter? Uh, no, well, not the filter. That's the bad part. Oh. Because it's made from charcoal. 
Well, you said it takes all the good stuff out. Yeah, but you you just drink the good stuff mixed with the bad stuff in the water, which is the milk. <laughs> so anyway, okay, so on. anyway, this fucking guy, yeah, he's talking about swords. He said bowels. Everybody's got a bowel, so I assumed he meant the sword that everyone has, whether it's your dick or your clit. <laughs> when is a clit a sword? When you you peel the hood back and you Ugh. go, Arr! you know, you're like you scrunch it up. Ugh. No, you sound like you have a history. Of women eh. with large clits. Well, dude, I remember uh, my first experience with a fucking girl with a disgusting pussy. <laughs> <laughs> and it, and it was like it was all the worst attributes, you know? It was like well, I guess they were all disgusting for a while, but one of the most disgusting ones. It had like <laughs> fucking a new- <laughs> What a statement. I guess they were all disgusting and horrible. Stinky and they fucking bled and they had goo yeah, dude. coming out of them. Oh yeah, they were all a mess for a while until you get you start meeting classier chicks, you know? Uh, but you gotta practice on these fucking disgusting <laughs> these disgusting ditches, you know? Classier but anyway. chicks who can wash themselves, yeah. That's where yeah. I put my baseline of class, by the way. <laughs> well, I remember this one chick who had uh, like bat wings and 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 buffalo fur and like uh, you know a, a massive like hood, but at the same time the 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 clit was like you know it was like a, a pinky finger, you know, and it, it would swell and stand and all that stuff. You know, that could be a sword, I, at least a dagger. This sounds like something out of a Blumhouse movie, by the way. <laughs> sounds like something out of an R.L. Stein. <laughs> um, so you responded, please run your sword deep into my bowels. And that's where the conversation stopped, I believe. I believe he was done dealing with you. Could this... So you think this guy did it? Uh, no. You wanted me to be honest? I think it was a uh, – is the term innocuous? What does that mean, like – Innocuous means it doesn't have any effect. It right. doesn't do anything. I think it was an innocu- innocuous comment you made on AOC's wall. I honestly believe that. Why Why would you think that? Because, I, was, I was really nice to her, too. Because I bet a bunch of crybabies were looking at it like, ah, typical scumbag man, blah, 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 right in a rude post. I also thought it was fine. I don't know that you write it on a... You know, a House of Representatives page, but uh, let me let me reference your comment here. She goes, uh, "Did you know that last year in the Inflation Reduction Act, Congress put in a lot of tax credits to help make it more affordable to make green updates in your life? You can even get up to four thousand dollars towards a used electric vehicle." Right now, credits are out there for things like solar panels and installation, upgrading your windows and doors, heat pumps, and more. Later this year, we expect even more credits to be rolled out for appliances like electrified ovens and stoves. Ha ha ha, little laughing emoji. To get info on the updated credits as they're released, sign up for the emails at whitehouse.gov slash clean energy. There is still so much work to be done, and we must keep going to secure the cash. She says a lot. I was on a roll there, and then I just mm. stumbled it. Must be uh, must keep going to secure continued major infrastructure investments in items like high speed speed rail, which has been a total failure in California, public transit, which is disgusting in New York, walkable cities, I agree on that, and more. But for now, here's something that can benefit the public right away. And make sure you share this info with anyone you know, considering making their home greener, more weatherized, or considering a switch to eco-friendly appliances. And you respond it, please make an OnlyFans. <laughs> With a moany face. <laughs> yeah, I like the moany face because I feel like that, like it drives to home the point, right? It's letting <laughs> letting them know. It's letting her know, like, hey, I don't want it one of those free ones where you have to pay for each individual video. I will pay for it monthly to yeah. have a subscription to uh, your OnlyFans w- AOC with PPV House of Representatives member. Yeah, I mean, if you can't tell your congressman you want to see your pussy, then who can you tell? <laughs> That's the clip. <laughs> That's the clip for this week. Okay. Uh, <laughs> That's fair. I think that'll get me in more trouble on Instagram, and that's fine with me because I don't want that thing back. I'm not going crawling back to those fucking losers, and I'm I'm already better for not being on there. You know why? Why? 
I jerked off like four times today. <laughs> That's pretty good. You didn't do it more when you were on Instagram? No, nah, dude. I was too busy watching funny shit. Oh, so from now on, the hope is that you'll be less funny and you'll jerk <laughs> off more on the podcast. <laughs> that was the goal, right? From the, the get go, you're like, come on, let's get these porn girls on. Get you jacking off again. <laughs> That was my goal to really boost you up. Hey, man, I really need you jacking off. So if you could just, you know, get back to it and get back to pounding, man. Um, uh, I can't be the only one on the show pounding, dude. The energy's off. <laughs> uh, I don't know. All right. Well, Godspeed. Uh, well, I hope you get yeah. it back. You probably won't because they're scumbags. Did I mean, I, I, any, did you say anything violent to anyone? Because I only have those two. I mean, I didn't say, yo, that's the, okay. Yeah. Let, let me get, talk serious for one second. Yeah. I, I do, I do say shit where it's like, where someone will say something and I'll say something where I have to quote, not even quote where like I give a number or a statistic. Right. So I think there was one that I, uh, that I had recently where someone, it was another religious themed argument where someone um, was Someone was trying to say that all Japanese people should be converted to Christians or something like that, you know? Okay. And so I responded to them with like a sarcastic remark. Like I said, like, uh, imagine the Crusades with katanas instead of long swords, you know, yeah. um, which I don't think is inherently violent. I don't think it threatens anything. But the conversation continued on in that vein where like uh, – um. And, and uh, that was one where I was like, look, dude, I'm not going to argue with you. You can just say what you want to say, but I'm done. Like, I, I just tapped out on that one because that guy was an asshole and I didn't want to fight. You know, I, I didn't want to get engage in that. So but but there was stuff where it was like, oh, well, Christians killed this. You know, these people were killed there. Hundred thousand these Nazi this. So I, I wonder if it could just be as simple as a few people didn't like me, reported me or a comment or something, and a couple of key words was enough. You know, the algorithm did the job and it just bye, you know? Yeah. Could have been. Did you did you fill out the thing yet or no? No, I'm going to, and if I don't get it back, I don't care. I'm not gonna make another one. But I will try and get my profile back and then just refrain from commenting, you know, because it's not worth it. All right, well, if but, you're uh, listening to this and you're on our Instagram at Worst Friendcast, comment underneath the episode description. And also, all these goddamn people who look at our story and then don't like the picture, I'm trying to get this thing into the algorithm. So make sure you're liking the weekly picture that I post on Friday mornings. But comment underneath, hey, fucking hashtag bring Shane back because he didn't say anything bad. Don't actually put that. That's a stupid hashtag. But Free YWF Shane. <laughs> like you're a rapper who shot someone <laughs> in the mouth. <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm like a young thug right now. Give me a Percocet in the courtroom. <laughs> <laughs> that Yeah. What is that story? Yeah, I, I watched the surveillance video. I, I mean, it looks like it could have it could have happened. I don't know. You probably have to be there. You, Probably have to get a, a a bunch of witnesses to say something, but yeah, I guess I I saw Young Thug is in court. I don't know what for something related to guns or drugs. I, I he, imagine. I think he shot and killed someone. Oh, why would you do that if you were a rap guy? You would think you could just delegate that task. <laughs> Who would have thought the guy rapping about killing and taking Percocets and having more guns than everybody else? Would have shot somebody and then tried to take a Percocet in court. But wait, yeah. did you see the video? Did someone try and yeah. pass him a Percocet or something? Yeah, so it looked like it was a, a break, maybe, like they were going to dismiss for a recess or something. And you know how, like, they have a, in a court, your plaintiff and your defendant sit in the front, and then there's, like, a little barrier, you know? Mm -hmm. And then that's where all the fucking people sit in the back, you know, all the fucking losers who aren't part of the trial. Yeah. And so, so some guy from like the very back from from uh, maybe like the fourth row gets up and it looked like everybody was kind of getting ready to recess you know people were kind of standing and talking and shit gets up and walks all the way over to this fucking this black guy I forget his name um, Bl this rapper young thug or blue yeah that guy or, okay yeah blue face is the one who's 
going to have a kid or something. Um, I, I don't know. I can't keep up with these rap guys anymore. Give me a good rapper and I'll keep up with them. Okay, fair enough. Fucking uh, anyway, the, the guy he walks all the way over to the guy at the, the defendant's seat and, he, you know, crouches down. looks like he whispers in his ear. They kind of slap hands and you obviously can't see a pill from the video. But as soon as he starts walking away, two police officers immediately, they like they it, it looked like they were watching the entire interaction. They immediately like just swarm over. They're like, hey, what the fuck was that? You know? And they're like looking in the, both the guy's hands and shit. Uh, it was pretty obvious from the police officer, or the bailiff's body language and reaction. Like, hey, they saw something, you know, like it wasn't like they coordinated it. It right. wasn't like a, it was a very like spontaneous, like, oh, shit, they reacted, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so like how dumb do you have to be to do that in a fucking courtroom? Yeah, no, that's pretty. Yeah, I wonder. I don't know. I, I wonder how many of those guys, obviously all the rap is there and they make the you know references and whatever. How many of those guys have such serious pill addictions? Oh, dude. Yeah. With, and and uh, the medicine, too. What is it? The, the, the syrup. Lean. Lean. Yeah. Yeah. They uh, they really do. Um, they glorify these drugs, which are so fucking dangerous. You know, um, it's, it's nothing compared to the Grateful Dead and, and LSD, you know. That that really is just it, it's it, LSD is really only dangerous if you have schizophrenia or something. Um, it, it really doesn't hurt anybody um, ex except if you're crazy already. Uh, but the the fucking drugs that are like so popular because of pop culture, like rap and and shit like that. Yeah, like fentanyl, Percocet, Molly, um, cocaine. Like it, not even the crack was never even really glorified. I feel like even the the rappers who were talking about crack and selling crack, they it was always from this this like the survivalist perspective, you know, like Ice Cube and stuff. Like he didn't he had this attitude where it was like he didn't want to sell crack, he didn't like crack, he didn't smoke crack, but he had to fucking pay his bills, right? He had to put a roof over his head, he had to survive. Mm -hmm. um, so that is the the image of crack that i got from rap is it, it really never seemed like rap songs were saying like oh uh it's really fun to do this and you should do it too it always had like kind of a dark undertone see i i, I think that started to turn with jay-z though jay-z mm. kind of glorified being a crack really? dealer a little bit he was talking about how much money he was making from it and how he was the king of yeah. New York and blah 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 all that not that look i'm not i don't think it's yeah, he, great he, but i'm not i he don't definitely think... did in the beginning with hard knock life and sure. shit i mean it, right hard knock life he, he it's kind of like a transitional thing huh it's kind of like the hard knocks lead to the good times but he doesn't like draw a distinction between the uh the good times being now that he's a rapper and maybe like hustling and being on the streets and stuff. Right. But yeah, he definitely has that sentiment that, that, that hard knock life, I think it alludes to it, but you're absolutely right. There are later songs, especially on his later albums, like, um, uh, the kingdom come and stuff where he seemed like he was kind of running out of shit to talk about. So, Maybe he did kind of glorify that stuff just because uh, I'll talk about my past. You know, it's been a while. Um, <laughs> that, hey, that was spot on. That was really thank good. Thank you. Now, do you need me to send you one of these bottles of promethazine or no? That I have? Oh, hell yeah, dude. Sip in on promethazine. I got them for What a did cough. you have that for? A oh, cough. Okay. How long have you had it? Uh, a while. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. 2017. Oh, shit. Well, OK, so that, that's funny because I uh, I remember my uh, my mother in law had a bottle of that shit. Right. When I was first out of the Marines and I remember seeing it in the, the level and it never changed. And I looked at the date on it and I was like, oh, it's old. I'm going to drink it. <laughs> so I did. Did you? Yeah. It didn't do anything. It just put me to sleep. Oh. So I, I, I started thinking I was supposed to mix it with uh, Sprite and something else, or is that codeine? Yes. 
Sprite and and vodka or something. I don't know. But uh, I think a lot of my pro- problem is I don't do well with sedating type drugs. I just want to go to sleep. So people get high on Ambien and I just barfed and went to sleep, you know. Well, um, you're supposed so, to fight through it, right? Isn't that what yeah. happens when you take an Ambien? Mm-hmm. You take it and if you fight through it, you're – Well, that's what – that's what they told me in the beginning, but I was like, oh, I don't want to fight through this. This sucks. I'm so tired, you know? Um, I think but, you're uh, supposed to take an Ambien, then you fight through it. You get on Twitter and you refer to the Secretary of Defense as a monkey. Isn't that how <clears> Roseanne <throat> Barr did it? Uh, either that or draw up a bath. <laughs> okay, one of the two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah. but yeah, I, I'm I'm not a fan of those sedating type drugs. But yeah, I just went to sleep off of it. And then it had been there for months. And then the day after I drank it, you know, I left a little bit in the bottle. Like the day after I drank it, my mother-in-law was like, Shane, did you drink this? And I was like, no. <laughs> <didn't."> <laughs> no. <laughs> Must have been evaporation. I don't know. Yeah, probably a hole in the bottle. <laughs> well, speaking of Jay-Z, I saw this report pop up uh this news story and i don't know how we're gonna feel about it i know how i feel i don't know how you're gonna feel um beyonce I might have con- conflicting feelings actually beyonce, i don't know beyonce was paid 24 million dollars for a private performance right uh-huh and it was in is, dubai is the whole thing? The- oh yeah i am appalled it should have been 50 million <laughs> if I got to go to that sandy fucking desert, I need to make 50 at least. Um, Look, if I'm going to be around all these Arabs, they're going to have to double my rate. <laughs> <laughs> I just I I hate. I mean, look, is there a dollar amount that she would play for ISIS? Yeah, dude. What is it? 25. <laughs> 25. It's only a million more to actually perform for a terrorist well, dude, organization. She's, she's versus, going to Dubai. Versus just her backers. Yeah. Oh, man. If she could do them back to back, back to back performances, she could come home with 49 million and just be set. Well, I mean, the reason I'm well, I'm saying is like the people who built Dubai, aren't they already just terrorists? I think the people who built it, most of them are dead and buried under the buildings. Well, I don't mean the laborers. Oh. I mean, like, the you know, the financial, you know, uh, uh, I guess backers, but like the, the people who planned that motherfucker and, and were like, OK, you go to work. Uh, I bet most of them are still in palaces with women in cages and, mm. uh, you know, sitting around a whiteboard, figuring out what the next 9-11 is going to be like. I don't know. I have a real so, I have a real yeah, issue. With the Middle East in general, well, I know you know. If you've heard this show more than two episodes, you know that. But well, like, I well, that's what I'm, I'm. I was gonna ask is is that your problem that she's going to play in the Middle East? Not the Middle East necessarily, but for terrorists, I, I, essentially. Look, I am huge on electric cars. I love electric cars, and people be like, "Oh, Matt must be real green." Not so much that. I want to get the fuck away from Saudi oil. Okay, and I know we don't import a lot of it. I believe we pump most of our own oil, but I'd love to find a way to cut the Saudis out because I think their culture is kind of reprehensible. I think they treat women like shit. I think they treat gays like shit. I think uh, there is reports that they back 9-11 financially. I mean, they pay for it. I hesitate to say Saudis. I mean, I know that they have a government and that that's what we mean, but like that is what I mean. If if yeah, yeah like, I, I know. But when I say Americans, the, I'm talking about American politicians, sure. not, you know, but Cletus making policy. Well, the, my, my issue is, is that the one, the political and religious and I, I use them together because they're so intertwined in the Middle East. Right. So you kind of have to. But the cultural, political and religious um, uh, zeitgeist of the Middle East is fragmented and it's diverse. You know, like there is, there's so much variation in people's belief. So you look at Iran, which up until the seventies was, uh, you know, it was like the most progressive. Place I, I saw pictures in the world. recently. Yeah, it yeah. Was pretty, it just uh-huh. chicks in skirts and like going to yeah, university I, and shit. I had heard it referenced before by Christopher Hitchens. Um, He had talked about how it was a paradise up until the revolution, the Islamic revolution or whatever. And I I had just kind of taken it in stride like, oh, that's 
Yeah, that makes sense. Fucking Arabs and Israel. Well, not Arabs. What is it? Uh, it, it what is it? Muslims fuck up everything, you know? Even that is not. That's that's just an oversimplification, too. That, but you that, get the point. That's the clip, by the way. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Just but, yeah, Muslims these, fuck up everything. <laughs> yeah. But, you, you, you know, I kind of just took it in stride and made a cynical joke about it. But then you see what Iran looked like. And, yeah, there were women in bikinis. There were universities. There were, uh, you know, parks and kids were playing with you know boys and girls it was it, everything was inclusive and there were women like in the full burqa and shit so it was it was not like anybody was being persecuted you know like if you wanted to be super devout then you could be you know it was just like but it was also a place of freedom and and i don't know all the details about the revolution in iran but i've i do know that it was a smaller group of religious fundamentalists that that basically took over it was like a terrorist takeover like iran was taken over by terrorists and i think their government is still you know kind of like a bunch of fucking terrorists isn't it yeah Yeah, and and that's my problem with it if beyonce accepted one dollar to go overseas to the middle east and play a concert for your average like like they just held a free concert okay Mm -hmm. and and all these you know people could come in and watch a beyonce concert and whatever I'd be totally fine with that. It's the leadership and it's always come. It always comes back to either the leadership or the radicals or the things that I have a problem with. When I say I have a problem with Christians, it's not the guy who prays and goes home and likes to say a prayer before bed and says grace and whatever. It's the guy who holds a sign that says God hates fags. That's the issue well, I have with Christians. When I have when I have an issue with Muslims, I don't have a problem with, you know, your average Muslim guy who prays six times a day or whatever it is. He runs a deli or he runs a business or he does this and that. I have an issue with the guys who want to get rid of our way of life. When I say I have an issue with Jews, it's not that I have an issue with Jews. I just have an issue with the bankers and the landlords. <laughs> well, that makes sense, dude. They're charging way too much. Thank you for letting me get to that. <laughs> that's that's why I gave you the give me one second. It's getting to a punchline. Um, um, well, that's the thing about well, that's kind of the point I was making too with Iran. It's like we can make that distinction all day, but with Iran, you don't really need to, and and a couple other places too, because yeah, a lot of these places the governments are just blatantly corrupt terrorist organizations, you know. And uh, th- th- that's concerning um, because I don't want Beyonce to get turned into a cage girl. <laughs> well, yeah, that that's an issue, too. I mean, uh, it would start World War Three if they tried to keep her. But maybe I don't know. Maybe we just trade some other terrorists like we <laughs> Brittany Griner. You want, Br- you want Brittany Griner? Yeah, we'll take yeah, Beyonce yeah. back. No, we don't treat a terrorist. We go, hey, we'll give you Brittany Griner <laughs> if you just give us Beyonce and we'll send you like 40 billion dollars. And they're like, OK, all right. My That's my issue. It's my issue of 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 taking fat amounts of money to perform for what I think are morally bad people. Okay. Do we know who's backing this? Do we know I who's mean, paying it's, the it's, $24 million? It's got to be something like the, the Saudi crown parents or something like that. It, it has to be. They're it the doesn't ones allude to it in the article? No. Beyonce headlined the launch of the ritzy Atlantis, the Royal Hotel in Dubai, where the songstress mm. is reported to have pocketed $24 million for the hour-long set. Holy fuck. Now, look, again, we, we some people will be like, hey, that's a lot of money. You might as well yeah. take it from or whatever. But I mean, hey, I'm going to offer you $50 million to perform on Epstein's Island 10 years ago. Like, I mean, here's the thing, though. I mean, we're, we're it's kind of like with Joe Rogan, you know, like, I mean, you kind of gave Rogan a pass for just speculating about Ivor Mickton and stuff where I was kind of like, hey, he's got a responsibility because he is on this platform and he talks, he conveys information and people take that information and they 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 might use it in a destructive way and he should be aware of some of the things he said we we had a more nuanced discussion but that's kind of the condensed version sure i see it kind of reversed here where it's like beyonce is expected to do research like maybe she vacations in dubai and and all she knows of dubai is like oh that's a place with the swimming pool on a ceiling mm-hmm. and you're like yeah it's actually a roof um <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, by the way people who say roof instead of roof I, okay but go I, ahead. I, I, I did it specifically i for understand you. go ahead <laughs> anyway the um the the point i'm making is if she just goes to dubai on vacation and that's all she knows of it 
and she's never heard of nine eleven and oil and Arabs and all this problems that we have with them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do Do you think Do you think it's it's unreasonable to expect her to do research? Be like twenty four million, but I better check and make sure they ain't terrorists. I think if. Beyonce was running an organization the same way Rogan does, where Rogan has three people who work for him and then a security team. But he books all his own guests. He has a video editor and he has Jamie. Um, I think if Beyonce was running that small of an operation, then, yeah, I, I could agree with that point. The thing is, Beyonce has probably the world's greatest PR team, uh, the world's greatest management team. Uh, the, you know, like she has someone who's heard of 9 11 around her. She, she absolutely has someone within her organization who was sitting there reading the 9 11 report going, yo, I don't know if you should do this show, Beyonce. And she was like, it's 24 million. Fuck you. I never heard of it. And it couldn't be that bad. Jay Z goes, yeah, yeah. Fuck I wasn't you. even yeah. in New York at the time. <laughs> so, Again, couldn't have happened. Hey, let her do it. I just think it's it's a bad look, and it's in a way. Look, I'm gonna go out on a on a limb and just say cancel Saudi Arabia. That's what I'd like to do yeah. personally. Cancel Saudi Arabia. Dude, I'll go a step further. Beyonce's a terrorist. <laughs> okay, well, that's the title too. <laughs> uh, so, moving on to the next thing here, unless you want to take a break real fast. Oh, uh, dude, could I take a break, actually, so I could get another monster? Yeah, let's go to commercial right now. All right, and we're back um, after a quick break. Um, mm -hmm. Your Pissed. boy got fired. Don't get him. Don't don't call him He's my your boy. boy. I never I never liked that guy at all. He's a part of the pedo party or something. I don't even like I don't like anything that's ever even been associated with this motherfucker. Justin Royland, who is what co-creator or is he a creator? I don't, I fucking black stain on the universe. If you <laughs> ask me, Justin Royland, the creator of Rick and Morty, uh, has been dismissed from his job, which is ironic that he was fired from the thing he created and it primarily uses his voices right yeah yeah i mean he's the two leads and a bunch of side characters um so it's a shame gonna work i guess they're gonna have to just fucking get a a robot or <laughs> chat gpt uh, yeah. yeah chat B G R T. but i mean it's really a shame too because uh the fucking uh, it, it's so multifaceted like this guy is funny so you want to like him and on the show and in person, he seems to have like a this this sensibility where he's like, oh, I would never hurt a fly. And I like women and I like to champion women. Sure, just like Bill and, Cosby. Yeah. yeah. And and he have like a real like a uh, realistic uh, outlook on the world and on life. He seemed like a good squared away all around guy. But then it, it is so strange. You these things happen and you realize you've been overlooking a lot of things. I mean, this guy is basically like fucking drunk every day at work recording a show, right? Like he just gets to work and dr drinks all day and then records voices and writes down jokes. So, I mean, he's obviously like a fucking drunk, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and we, we all just kind of like, laugh that off because he was like well he's a fucking wasted drunk but he's doing good voices you know he's got to get all fucked up so he can do the voices you know but it's like when i get fucked up i do a lot of stupid shit and really cool voices um <laughs> but it looks like he when he gets fucked up and he does his cool voices the stupid hit shit he does might involve kids, I heard, allegedly. Well, I don't know. Well, see, they've yet to even address that at all. Right now, they oh, fired yeah, him yeah. only for the domestic battery and false oh, imprisonment yeah. charges. Uh, well, that's what I mean by, by, by multifaceted. See, like, I don't think he should get fired from his job that he created just because he beat the shit out of his wife, like, or girlfriend or whoever. Just let him settle that, like, in court or in jail or whatever. Like, you know, like... At least let him get found guilty first. Like maybe he didn't put her in the hospital. So 
Uh, in August 2020, Royland was arrested and charged with felony, domestic battery, and false imprisonment in Orange County, California, in connection with an alleged incident in January 2020 involving an unnamed woman he was reportedly dating at the time. Royland was released on bail after pleading not guilty, and pretrial is scheduled for April 27, 2023. Mm. Can... I- can we move the court system any faster? Well, I don't know. They did got a lot of fucking crack fiends and killers and shit. This, like, this, this, this guy got arrested in August 2020, and his pre-trial isn't scheduled until April of this year. Yeah, I feel like these – I read somewhere that it had already been delayed for some reason of his once, but I feel like um, it, it's celebrities get a lot of leeway, right? Like the, these guys often get – deals where it's like if they can't make a date that's already set they can just have their lawyer get in touch with the court and they can like rearrange it reschedule and stuff so i don't know that it's entirely on the court system or not i know that if i try to fucking rearrange a date for a parking ticket my job fires me you know for for missing work or the court arrests me Mm -hmm. for not showing up at 9 a.m on the dot you know um or yeah actually it did happen once where i was there and I was like, I think I had to drop my kid off somewhere before I could get to court. And so I got to the court late. I had to be there at nine. I got there at like nine twelve. And the bailiff outside the courtroom wouldn't let me into the courtroom. He's like, no, once the courtroom starts, you can't go into courtroom. You're going to have to go down to the county clerk. You're going to have to request a, a new trial date. And I'm like, well, it says on this ticket here that if I don't, show up today and either pay this or make a plea that I could be uh, a warrant could be issued for my arrest. He's like, I'll know the law, sir. You're going to have to go down to the county clerk, you know, fucking scared the shit out of me. I got this badge, but I don't know the law, sir. Why is he talking like John Coffey from fucking Green Mile? <laughs> oh, dude, that's actually what he looked like. Yeah, okay, he, or he, he, that or Debo from okay. Friday. Yeah. Um, so here's the issue uh, in the show, Rick and Morty, like you said, he does the voices for both Rick and Morty, mm, right? Yes. And yeah, they're, they're pretty distinct voices. Can you do the show without him, without those two characters? Mm. Cause they also, that show has a real fun way sometimes of doing things like, mm. could, would you still watch? You probably wouldn't, right? Would you still watch well, the show if they were like, we're going to go on a mission for the next three seasons and you won't see us. And it was just well, about the family or side characters or something like that. I might actually like that. Yeah. So I, I, I'll say this. I really like that show for the first three seasons without a doubt. Season four was a little weird. It had good episodes. It was a little weird. Season five, I can't really even remember a lot of season five and I haven't seen any of six yet. And it's the whole thing is out. I'm just waiting for it to be on Hulu or something. I don't have the I don't care enough anymore to go and download it or something. Because this, this um, was like your number one show for a while, right? Or, well, American or up there. Dad has always been okay. that, the number one, I think. But it was up there for animated shows for sure. And it still is up there. I just don't watch it as religiously. But um, the the last two seasons, I would say that I've seen four and five have not been to the level of the first three nowhere near as as funny or as I think complex. And I feel like they did it intentionally. You know, I feel like they wanted to have, you know, they got 70 episodes. So I feel like they wanted to have like some episodes where it didn't feel so serialized, you know, it like the first three seasons, um, there's a lot of overarching story arc. Um, There's like evil Morty, and there's this dimensional shift where they switch universes, which is referenced a bunch of times. There's like this Cronenberg world, which is Morty's original world, which they go back to. So there's like a lot of like, um, uh, yeah, yeah, what is it? Uh, densely packed material. You have to be invested in the storyline mm-hmm. to get a lot of the, the – even the plots. So if you watch an episode from season three, you might not really get it because it's set up by an episode in season one. So it felt like four and five were the kind of there to, to break it up. So if you were flipping through the channels and an episode happened to be on, 
there's a good chance you could just watch it and not really need to be invested in the series. You could watch it as a standalone more than anything else, more like a yeah. Simpsons episode where you don't really need to know. There's no ongoing story right. with the Simpsons. It was just right. kind of like, yeah, standalone adventure is perfect. Yeah. And which is fine, but it was just, I don't know. There's just less there. Um, but, but I, I, the thing is, um, I felt like I hadn't watched any season six. I felt like they were probably going to start ramping that up again based on how season five ends. It ends with evil Morty coming back and you're like, oh, shit, I've been wondering if they're ever going to get to any of this shit again. And they bring it all back up right at the end. So I felt like it was getting to a point where they're like, all right, let's give them what they want. Right. So the fact that he's leaving now of all times, I think, is is really the most concerning because I feel like. They're going to get anybody to do the voice um, or maybe they hire two people, you know, one person who's an expert in each. But I feel like voices are are not that hard to replicate, really. Like people are really fucking good at impressions. You've seen Michael Winslow. Sure. Um, he could do a, a tea kettle. OK. Uh, yep, that's telephone. One. OK. A telephone. Um, ring, 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 ring. Chainsaw. Okay. Oh, dude. One time he did a Jenga tower collapsing. That was a good one. <laughs> Oh, sorry. That was World Trade Center. My bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I found two examples for you here uh, of – but I also want to touch a little more on this Justin Roiland guy because I don't even think him beating this chick up is the worst situation. You know what else I wonder too though? Hmm. I wonder if they knew the hammer was coming down at some point because remember, he was arrested in August 2020. Oh, yeah. That's I funny, I don't huh? know where those two seasons – I don't know when they were produced. Well, uh, let me think. I feel like they came out around – some of them had to have come out in the interim between 2020 and right now. Oh, I mean yeah, they uh, had yeah. to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so yeah, it's a, that's a funny point you made there. What do you, what do you think that, that is? Do you think that um, the uh, Adult Swim and the game company, all those guys were like, hey, give us a date. As soon as you get a date, you know, when you find out you're going to court, let us know because that's when – we're going to let you go. And if you don't let us know, you know, we'll fucking we'll make it worse. Or do you think um, do you think uh, what's it called? They they just found out about it recently because he went to court because um, I, I, I guess he got arrested in August. But was that even reported? Because I didn't even hear about any of this shit until now. OK, so I said August. I was wrong. Uh, May 2020, he was charged. Mm -hmm. He pled not guilty in October 2020. But you look at the last two seasons. The, the, the Yeah. The, okay. The two, so it, the two seasons you have said have been non-serialized. Or you said what? Four and five, right? Yeah. Four and five have not been that serialized. So four occurred before he got arrested. Five is after. after. And again, I, I don't know if it's like The Simpsons where it takes a full year to produce it's, they're episodes. notoriously slow on the show. They're yeah, slow, they take but, a long time. But do they take a long time writing or does it take a long yeah. time to draw everything? Because both. those are two different things. No, no, no. It's both. I mean, I think I think they they've made that. Uh, I, I watched a behind the scenes where they talked about how one episode, it's the season two premiere, was a challenge because of the animation. Yes. Like it was just it was a rendering nightmare. They couldn't animate the episode. Mm -hmm. It was just kept holding them back and then the the writing thing was the reason for the delay between seasons two and three they kept on like going back to the drawing board they didn't they had like written themselves into a hole and they wanted to do it right and adult swim said all right just take as much time as you want i guess and and that's what they did Man, the ratings have really been falling off a cliff, though. Ooh, they sure have, huh? It might have been a two-year delay, though. That that you lose people when uh, when you do that. Like, look, they went from one and a half million to almost two million to two point wow. three million to one point five million to nine hundred thousand to half a million. Wow, that's the most current season, half a million. Holy shit! Yeah. Well, well, you know, that's what I was wondering. Like, do you think that uh, that's what I meant to, to cap off that first thing with? Do you think Adult Swim was like, uh, tell us when the court date is so we can we can deal with it. And then they found out the court date and they, they dropped the axe. Or do you think 
they told Justin Roiland back in May of 2020, hey, um, as soon as this uh, starts getting into court proceedings and you start having to uh, to face the music, uh, so to speak, or get ready to go to jail or de- deal with this publicly, you're out. So whatever you want to get done, get it done because you're going to be out sooner rather than later. So do you think, you know, maybe, you know, the game just released from his one company like a month ago, and then he got released from that job like a little bit after, um, Adult Swim is announcing this and they've already got plans to recast it. They're already deep into creating another season. Um, so they could potentially have his voice or they could already be recording with somebody else. Who knows? But do, do you think that this was like um, uh, a, a thing where they were like, hey, help us clean up and then get out and, and, and be gone? Or do you think they, uh, they kind of just sprung this on him when they found out about the court date? I don't think the court date has anything to do with it, honestly. Really? I, I, f- I feel like it's only public because the court date was no, ma- made. No. And and we'll go through these uh, messages he sent. I think it was – I think in the climate we're living in, in the, the groomer climate we're living in where – Balenciaga mm. did some weird shit, some definite weird shit that was satanic. About. Absolutely. But you can also look at some of the stuff in the background and they there's like like a picture of a like a line and someone's like, look, I, I was arguing with people on Twitter about it. Not enough to get me booted. I don't do that. <laughs> uh, there's a line in the background, like someone drew a line on the wall. And they're like, look, that's a penis. That's meant to be a dick. And they're saying that kids take dick if you wear Balenciaga. And it's like we are in mm. such a heightened McCarthyism uh, <sighs> type environment when it comes to child grooming and this and that. Don't get me wrong. There's plenty of well, child sex predators in the world. Plenty of them probably in powers of authority in the world, not necessarily politicians, but maybe some politicians on all sides. There's a lot of weird shit going on, and there's reason that I think people can be nervous. But when you get into that environment of, hey, there's bad people among us, you start looking at everybody and going, that's a bad person. That's a bad person. That's a bad person. That could be a bad guy over there. He's bad over there. And you start overreacting to things. So, well. Is that what you're is that what you're getting to? Because I I don't know what he groomed or didn't groom or or any of that shit. But I I saw like uh, some tweets saying like, oh, this fucker groomed me. And it's like, okay, well, you're a victim. I got to believe you or I go to jail. So I just (laughs) did that kicked off Instagram if I don't believe you. Yeah. Got to believe you or they take my next account (laughs) proactively. Yeah. Um, But I. I, I, I don't know, like, did did he actually groom or was he just like, you know, was he just like uh, doing the Rick and Morty voice? <laughs> if I do it. So so if Cosby had been wearing the sweater, he was just, <laughs> he was just acting. Well, if he was wearing the sweater and doing the jello pudding, I put thing. on the sweater, I eat the pudding, I put yeah. you to sleep, I fuck your asshole. Yeah, yeah he's okay. playing a character. <laughs> OK, good. Uh let me play for you first a couple versions of oh, impressions. Dude, did, did did Cosby anally rape people? Uh, dude, I wasn't there. Oh uh, well, I don't know if you read the case report or something. No, but, no, you know, no, he no. raped I, so many. I saw headlines and I saw a powerful black man, so I decided to tear him down because mm. in a white society. I'm told that's what it is. Man, let me tell you, the black comics who would come out afterwards after 70 women or 80 women were like, yes, he raped me. And we're like, oh, man, them bitches are lying. I'm like, oh, oh. Yeah, it's know. not it's a good look. look. No, I think D.L. But- Hughley was the biggest one to come out and really be like, lying ass hoes. All right. It, they grady. <laughs> um, but but. You don't you don't know for sure. He, no, I don't he might know a holy fuck him in. No, unfortunately, okay. I don't. Well, if you're going to rape somebody, dude, an anal rape is just so fucking disrespectful. Yeah. Like if you have a pussy available, like and you would rape their anus, like, <laughs> God damn, what a horrible person you are. It's a rude thing to do. I would agree. Um, here's some guy doing impressions. Now, on the show here, I think because you may have seen this before, you said they can get an impersonator before the show. You did say, I don't think it'll sound good finding an impersonator. Well, I but I clear I feel like I clarified that right at the beginning, too, 
because it's it's more about Justin Roiland improv and the process. Yeah. 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 That. Like because Dan Harmon does a pretty good Rick voice on a on a lot of like TV spots and interviews and shit. He'll do Rick and it sounds pretty good. Um, but uh, the um, the the thing is, is like a lot of the dialogue is improv and then they they animate the scenes based on improvised dialogue sometimes. And then on top of it, the actor, Justin Roiland, has a problem with substance abuse. So he's always getting drunk on set and like burping and like, you know, like doing that. Like it's like it's more about like being in this this, you know, drunken stupor of a per- persona to play the character like Morty's probably going to be an easy easy recast i feel like mm-hmm. because i feel like morty is is just like you act nervous and you get the cadence i feel like that one's easy but i feel like the rick character is really complex and it doesn't work without justin roiland yeah as far as process goes though we are saying that <clears throat> The best writing process for them is a guy coming in drunk and, and yeah. improving. Yeah. Maybe you put a little more weight on your writers and and allow them to, I don't know, expand. But maybe uh, maybe, that changes maybe the just, dynamic of the show. Maybe just fill their fridge with Michelob Ultra. <laughs> so here's uh, some guy on YouTube. That's the best plug I can give him uh, doing a Rick and Morty impression. Hey, Rick, uh, I feel like I'm forgetting something important. Yeah, yeah, me too. I, I can't think of it, though. Huh? Oh, well, you know what they say, you know, if you can't, if you can't remember something, it's it's probably, it probably wasn't that important, you know? Yeah, you, you gotta stop hanging out with Jerry. I didn't get that from my dad. Everybody says that. Have you never heard that before? Morty, I'm the smartest being in the universe. If that was a thing, I, I, you think I would heard about it? Rick, literally everybody... Oh, wait a minute. Uh, I think I remember. The thing we were talking about, or the the saying? Oh, yeah, shit, I forgot. Jesus Christ, Ricky! Wait, oh my God, we're supposed to go vegan, Morty. Wait, vegan? Why would we go mm. vegan, Rick? Uh, I don't know. It sounds like being depressed with extra steps. Yeah, I'm not doing that. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. I did hear towards the end um, something. We got to go vegan, Morty. That I could definitely tell was a different voice, um, which is fine. I mean, it's not going to be perfect. It, Maybe they could get it, a robot to do it perfect. It's a guy sitting in his car too, with yeah, a, with a iPhone microphone. Yeah, but it's good. It's good. It's a good. It's a good two impressions. But um, you know what? I thought of you had brought up before the the cast or the um not the cast the writers they could choose to go in another direction. And my son even said, uh, "What if they just do the Jerry show?" Um, Jerry is uh, and, Rick's uh, son-in-law. Yeah, and and that's what I was saying. I wonder if they take it in a different direction like that. And you I could, would be cool. I like Jerry. You could have somebody doing the voices of Rick and Morty, but maybe they just pop in at the end for three lines and then leave again. Yeah, or you could even recast them because it's another – type of multiverse deal so it's like you get a rick and morty from the multiverse where they are voiced by sure. mark hamill and jimmy kimmel or whoever yeah you yeah, know? yeah. For, grab some hard left libs and let them know we don't condone rape here except well, yeah there's a lot of lefties on that show hamill, except- hamill got in trouble this week for liking oh, the wrong no. thing liking the wrong thing Oh, he didn't fucking Cosby anybody's butthole, did he? No. Uh, I want to play what did he like? one more impression for you, but I'll tell you the Hamill thing real quick. We don't have to go in depth about it. Some trans person tweeted, I'm more of a woman than J.K. Rawlings will ever be. And J.K. Rawlings responded, citation needed. And uh, I thought that was a cute little jab. I didn't think it was hilarious. I thought it was a little bit like, you know, because J.K. Rawlings is real big on like, hey, Women are women. I worked hard to be a woman. I'm a feminist. I believe in women. I don't I like the idea. I cut my cock off. I cut- just like all the rest of you. <laughs> yeah. I worked hard to do it. So Mark Hamill liked J.K. Rawlings' tweet. What he meant mm. to do was like the other girl's tweet. And it caused Allegedly. this big uproar where all these people were pressuring him into unfollowing J.K. Rowling and taking back his like and making a public statement. And it was, it was a oh, lot. Oh, man. It was just you unnecessary. Just, you should fucking go Joker on their ass. Yeah. 
kill a whole bunch of bro- uh, Broadway guys, a whole bunch of Wall Street guys in the subway. Oh, dude, that's a different Joker. I'm talking Mark Hamill Joker, where he would just like, you know, what did Mar- that version? He fucked Harley Quinn, right? In a in a probably big pool full of whipped cream or something. That yeah. dude, animated Joker was a fucking pimp, dude. He didn't have any of these terrorist aspirations. No, but the terrorist aspirations are what make him cool. Not if I, he was Saudi, know. though. Not if he was Saudi. I thought fucking that clown girl was what made him cool. <laughs> I'm throwing my hat in for this girl for Rick and Morty because her voices are voices and she's hot. Uh, If I'm being honest, she's got a little choker on. She's thin. She's got a decent B, small C cup titties. What's her fucking butthole look like? It's solid. Okay. All right. All right. I'll take your word for it. I think she's a kid, actually, though. Oh. Yeah, that makes me nervous now. Uh, We're going to get to the Justin Roiland tweets, but I just want to play for you her impression of Rick and Morty. Okay. Mm. Is it as good as the guy? I think it's better based on her looks. Uh, Yeah. Okay. My name is Katie. I'm 24 years old. There you go. I win. And I'm auditioning for the role of Rick and Morty. Mm. Oh, Rick. Hi, caramba. You're drinking alcohol again? Oh, brother. We have space adventures to go on. You and me, we're space adventure buddies. But we're also family. And that's what matters at the end of the day. Right, Grandpa? Right, Grandpa Rick? You said it, Marty. (laughs) Well, Well, there we have it. Thank you. <laughs> I feel like she doesn't really understand the characters fully, but the voices are spot on. <laughs> okay. All right. That's just the point I was making before, dude. Like Justin Roiland, he gets a character, you know, because uh-huh. he's a drunk. Mm-hmm. Make this girl a drunk and maybe. <laughs> yeah. I thought she was great personally. I, I really like the way she looked. Um, she embodied the characters. Um, I liked her a lot better when I found out she was 24. Yeah, me too. God, me too. Uh, She has a cameo? Why does she have a cameo? Who the fuck would ever pay this girl for a cameo? I'd pay you to cameo out. (laughs) (laughs) All right. um, Let me get to the tweets now. Uh, Oh, yeah. I don't even know what the fuck this motherfucker said. (laughs) Okay. So, the tweets. He messaged a girl, and I'm going to read what he messaged her. I don't like the way it looks already. Can you write a song? I don't know why he's asking her to write a song, but can you write a song about nine dicks of different sized and ethnic origins hanging above your face? And then in the lyrics, describe how they each splatter you with semen. But important, the large message of the song is about how we are all the same and no more racism. Okay, and then there's a lot of other messages after yeah. that. So he says, "Who's this lead <laughs> I mean, character?" That was already there was a lot to unpack there, but mm-hmm. I feel like I feel like what I'm I I, I want to point out before you read anything else is like there's a lot of other message, a lot of other messages under his message, but they're all his message. Um, so what you have here is this big request to uh, write a song for dicks and semen and stuff and racism. Mm-hmm. Um, and then a lot more messages he sent to this person without getting a response. Yeah, without getting a response or it looks like addressing the the weird fucking message he sent about the song. Mm-hmm. Because like if I was a I don't know, uh, a musician for hire or something and someone sent me this song, I'd be like, oh, it's a joke. I'm not going to respond. You know, um, it, it, it would at least behoove the person asking like hey i know it's a little silly but uh you know i'm doing this for a tv show it seems like this is almost uh like sent as an insulting type of message so he was his next thing is he says who's this lee character i have no concept i don't get it i don't know she says why does he she have to find parking why are you a huge faggot (laughs) Oh, that's mean. Yeah. And then he says, Why would you ever send that in a fucking DM? (laughs) Jesus Christ. Well, why would you say it on a podcast is the better question. But hey, I'm reading news here. Okay. I think, I think the podcast, um, like it adds the context, you know? Sure. Um, Until somebody cuts that out. 
Uh, but then you just go on TV and you double down. <laughs> yeah. He says, uh, answer later. And then he says, sorry, Allie, I'm OK. I think he means I'm on. I'm on my fourth glass of wine. This was all off record. Don't break my trust, you asshole. JK, you're all right. That was nice of him. OK, so I'm I'm assuming that was someone he kind of knew. And he sent a mean message and he was like talking about weird sex stuff. And then they didn't respond because it, it's obviously it, it doesn't seem like that would be somebody uh, like a random fan. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, mm. Here's another one. Here's the problem. This was with a girl who confirmed she was, I think, 16 years old. Okay, that's a problem. He says, uh, "Oh yeah, sorry at the airport. At the airport, it's insane in the membrane. Cool Cypress Hill reference for a sixteen-year-old wow. kid. Yeah, what, so some girl who's never heard that song. Yeah, what time is it there now? She says eleven thirty-seven. He says, "Ooh, oh, so 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 rate is so rate and me so Chinese." Oh, okay, I get it. <laughs> okay, that's funny. He's a funny guy. She See, he's said, doing an impression. He's doing a voice right now. She oh, said, "I have school tomorrow." Oh, school tomorrow? Oh no. And she says, <laughs> fuck my life. And he says, you should just run away from home and go into sex slavery, you stupid, fu you fucking stupid <laughs> faggot bitch. Just kidding. And she oh says, you God. wish, you stupid bitch. Holy shit, dude. Uh, he says at another point. Uh, so he again in this message here, he is confirming that he is aware of her age, even though she did say it. I can't find the exact tweet right now, but there was oh, one no. when she stated her age. She said, he says, would you do video game reviews and stuff like that? I bet you do good. And she says, yeah, just playing games and shit. And he says, then once you turn 18, you can just start cam whoring. Dude. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. So here's the thing. Mm hmm. One, if you are an adult, mm -hmm. like a real adult, like mm -hmm. a, if you're 18 and you talk to a 17 year old, I, I'm not fucking stupid. I get how that works. But if you're a fucking adult, why are you even talking to anybody if you know that they're under 18? Like, unless you're asking for trouble. So and I, I don't mean, mean asking for trouble like, oh, you want to start a bar fight? I mean, you you know what the consequences are if you get caught doing this, like not not caught like fucking a person, but just caught talking to an 18 year old. So why even put yourself in the position? And then on top of it, on top of it, to make such an overtly sexual reference as to talk to someone and say like, oh, and as soon as you turn 18, you can show me your fucking pussy like I would do to AOC, <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, holy shit, dude. Oh, my God. You have to be fucking – you have to be really fucking, like, blackout drunk or just so brazenly uh, flippant about – about uh, Horned up, too. Yeah, yeah, horned real up. horned up. But still, like, even – like, you have to draw the line somewhere, right? Like, no matter how horned up you or I are ever, I think we would know, like, dude, you can't even make the reference – to somebody who's under 18 because of how it would be viewed. You know, you can't even joke around like that. Right. Until they're 18. You can't even do it. I told this to Jen last night when I was going through some of this stuff. If you're a celebrity, you're going to get reached out to by hot chicks in their 20s, whatever, and kids. OK, if you yeah. especially if you do a cartoon show like this, you need to. But, you know, that's what kind of sucks about society. If some 25-year-old chick reaches out to you, right? Say we're just the world's biggest podcasters at that point. Joe Rogan can suck our dicks at that point. And you – Suck them now. You have your wife and whatever, <laughs> but your wife's like, oh, if any, like, big-titted Filipina girls hit you up on IG, you're allowed to, like, you know, ask them for pictures of their clitties. And you're like, oh, okay, wife, that's pretty cool. Um. I'm trying to create a scenario where we're not cheating, but you understand what I'm saying. So I'll cheat. The weird, <laughs> the weird thing is, <sighs> there is a line that I don't agree with. I don't like this whole thing of you, the power dynamic. Like if I'm the creator of something uh, cool, and some chick wants to fuck me because I'm the creator of something cool, 
as long as I'm not a creep about it, as long as I'm not a, you know, scumbag to her or I hit her yeah. during set, whatever, I, I don't understand the problem with it. No, I, I, I don't get that either. Uh, even my wife is kind of like, uh, kind of weirded out by that because she kind of has like, uh, maybe even a kink for like, uh, men who have power, you know, like it's, 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 it's a kink for some men too to see a woman with a lot of power, you know, like a a female CEO or some shit. But uh, it's it's not, or it's somebody who's very creative. But it's it's not a mis- it's not a um, a misogynistic thing to be a man and you have a job and somebody comes up to you and they're a woman and they're like, oh, I think that you have that job is really cool. And for you to be like, oh, thanks. Now, it does get really murky if that person works under you. 100%. 100%. Um, yep. Um, and even if they might be your coworker, it's murky depending on the work. But, um, yeah, like the idea that anybody could come up to you because you created this podcast, um, you know, suck the fucking cum out of your dick so good. <laughs> and then afterwards complain because – you know, they said like, um, oh, he won't call me back. He won't. Not not even that. Oh, like okay. um, they, they complain about the fact that, you know, they knew you had a podcast, with all these followers. And we interviewed all these big names. And uh, they knew that, you know, by being associated with you, they could potentially help their own podcast career. So they fucking gave you the best BJ of your life because they thought it would help their career. And they felt pressured by you. And all you were doing was reciprocating you know, them being like, I love your podcast. Can I suck your dick? Like, yeah, that that's un, unfair. Like, that's where it's like, come on, you, you've, you've got to draw a line somewhere. And it's it, it is too much of a gray area now there. There really has to be a discussion about consent in that context, sure. because, you know, if if the the idea that somebody could initiate it and then afterwards be like, yeah, but. I felt pressured because of who he is. Mm-hmm. Okay, well then every cop should just kill every black guy right now. <laughs> I think that is a great analogy. <laughs> I but I I I agree with you. There is a weird thing where it's almost like they want a world where people are totally bland. You're not allowed to present any kind of I have wealth or I have power or mm-hmm. anything like that. Also, don't judge someone based on their looks. Also, I'm not taking this to a trans issue, but there are people who say it's transphobic if you're a guy and you won't date a trans woman, right? Oh, there dude, there I'll are people that say, suck yeah, you, you will. What I'm saying is it shouldn't classify you as a bigot if you choose not to. Um, no, you are. So it's crazy. They want us to be these meme characters of just a blank face. And we go up and we go, hello, would you like to mate with me? Yes, I would like to mate with you. And even that is going to catch shit <laughs> from people who say we have an overpopulation problem in the world. So there's no solution. Someone has to complain about everything. Now, the one thing you can step into and say is what you definitely can't do is talk to a kid. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, <laughs> I mean, I feel like even in the like the insect kingdom, you know, like. <laughs> They don't, they don't have like the same sexual dynamics we do, but I feel like even them, like, you know, like if you're a, an ant and you pick up leaves or grains all day or something and you're carrying them back to your, to your, your anthill, I feel like if you make a, uh, a, a, a pass at a, a younger worker ant, you're like, Hey, you know, if, if you need me to rub the kinks out of your exoskeleton later, the other and, ants go groomer. Yeah. Hey, Grover, you know you're not supposed to be fucking talking to him. He's not 18, you know? <laughs> like, I feel like it's just obvious. It's ubiquitous. Um, you, Especially in this day and age when everything is digitally recorded. Oh, and it, yeah. it's so easy to expose. Like, what kind of a fool would uh, ask a fucking girl to cam whore? She's under 18, and then you call her a faggot bitch? <laughs> like, yeah. you... You already ruined your career, man. Hundred um, percent. Now look, here's a picture of the chick. She looks about twelve. Who? She looks like she got trafficked hard. Ah, all right, let me hit play on this. I believe this is a video of the girl, but I haven't listened to this yet. Let's let's just see. 
So I am the original poster of this tweet. Um, it's about how back in September 2015, when I was 16 years old, Justin Rowland had followed me on Twitter. And I messaged him first because I was excited. The man who made my favourite show followed me. So it made me feel a little bit special. But so um, opposites. people don't think it's real. And I'm here to... <laughs> the, uh, the not Rick and Morty, the other show. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. The, the less funny, less successful show. I figured I was a Brit and people don't really like Brits because of our bent fucking teeth. So I was excited when a celebrity showed some interest in me as a human being. <laughs> to prove it so here are the dms do a little scroll i told him i was 16 he said he's looking for my pictures and knows why he added me says i was super cute and let's just go up here new tab and it is him so that my pictures and knows why let's he added so uh he says, "Oh God, I've been looking through your pictures, and I know why I f- added you. I thought, oh, you dude, were that's su- almost as bad as Adam Levine, right off the bat. Yeah, I thought uh. you were super cute, but I did not think you were so young. Yeesh. Oh. And she says, "Ye, I'm just super small." He goes, "Ha ha, yeah, that's one way of putting it. I'm glad you like my show." And then, uh. She's like, uh, let's see, let's go back. Damn, dude, I didn't realize he is, he is King Jellybean. Uh, yeah, she's jailbait, I guess. Uh, he's talking about um the character who Jessica he says. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the context was with that, but there's a character named Jessica, and she's 15. Yeah, she's jail. This is Justin Roiland saying this. Yeah, yeah. she's jailbait. I guess it's strange. I look at the characters mm-hmm. as being older, but they're not. You are jailbait sure. yourself, though, so... Jesus and, Christ. And then he screams jailbait, and he posts a picture of the shame girl from Game of Thrones. Shame mean, yeah. Uh, oh, my God, dude, this is really disturbing because it's like... I mean, it's... um, it, Like I said, it's so obvious that there's no excuse. Like, I don't know what the fuck you could be thinking, you know? Yeah, I, you you are jailbait, like, and then being like, "Oh, I know why I added you." Didn't realize you were so young. Come on, come on! How could you not see a problem with that? Someone else is messaging him and says, uh, "I have a lot of issues with sex." Unfortunately, I don't know if this is the same. Pro- uh, it might be, but I don't know, and probably not because it's a different date. You should go to a sex therapist now while you're young. Sort that stuff out. Jealousy is going to conflict with your kinks. I don't know, dude. There's just a lot of like, again, we're popular. People love us. I get a message from a girl. Right. And and again, this is not a cheating scenario. It's just I get a message from a girl. But say I'm going to flirt with her. I check the profile first. I make sure the pictures look legit. And I ask Mm. the age, hey, how old are you? The second she says 17 or under, I go, hey, thanks for being a fan of the podcast. I don't really think it's right that I'm talking to you because you're a kid. I don't even do that. Block her. And then I would block her, truthfully. Actually, i go and fucking kill her for even talking to me. You know what? I'd probably just ask her for pics of her butthole. For being yeah, I, I'd just be like, hey, I have power. Show me your fucking <laughs> ditch. <laughs> um, yeah, man. It's it's. So I got to be honest. I don't think it was the abuse thing. Rick and Morty survived yeah. – the uh Dan Harmon, the other creator, having his own kind of minor Me Too situation. Um mm, if boy. You, for the audience, he had a thing where he hit on a subordinate to him, she turned him down, and then he was kind of shitty to her afterwards. I really feel like they could have pushed past a domestic violence thing. I think yeah. it's this in the climate we're living in. That well, yeah, this 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 in any climate, really. Yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah, you can't no, you're be fucking right. kids. Oh, well, 1970s Beverly Hills, I think he would have been fine, but I don't know, know man. Somebody wanted to charge Roman Polanski. <laughs> That's a good point. Um, all right. Well, I guess we should wrap this one up. Should we play Tucker real fast? There's no real discussion uh, on it. It's just fun, right? Yeah, let's send us let's send a go out on this fucking dweeb Tucker has won. They got rid of the uh, Eminem spokespeople, though people are saying they could just be leading up to a Super Bowl commercial. So that's mm. possible too. 
But uh, if you remember, we did an episode a couple months ago about Tucker getting mad that the green M&M wasn't sexy anymore. They turned her into kind of a frump. Um, the concept in and of itself that <laughs> that someone looks at an M&M. Now, look, I kind of understand this point. I, I don't agree with it, but I kind of understand this point. We are trying to nerf things and we don't necessarily have to make every single aspect of everything in life you know, fit with a woke agenda. And the truth be told, if it sold less M&Ms, they would get rid of it quick. Any major corporation mm -hmm. would put a fucking tiki torch in a guy's hand and have him saying, you know, Jews will not replace us if it meant <laughs> they could sell more of their products, right? Mars bars will not replace us. <laughs> yeah. Skittles will not replace us. Skittles will not replace us as they march through a, Charlottesville. What's a one syllable candy? Not rageous. That's uh, three. <laughs> I don't Not know. rageous. I, I hate words like that where it could be three or four or something. It's annoying. But here's uh, Tucker's response. Uh, I just thought it was funny. Uh, he was picking on some of the new. They introduced new M and M's, like a non-binary one or something else. So here's a quick clip of Tucker Carlson uh, raging against candies that are made up. Woke well, M&M's have returned. The green M&M got her boots back, but apparently is now a lesbian, maybe. And there's also a plus-sized, obese, purple M&M. So we're going to cover that, of mm. course. Finally. That's what we do. Okay, so this is an obese M&M? Yeah, she's kind of a pig. I think it's a peanut M&M, mm. &M, Tucker. Yeah, Just it's a peanut M&M. Mm. So if this is obese, and it's like egg-shaped... And this is perfectly round. Yep. But that's thin. Obese. Thin. Well, I think it's about the proportions, you know? Yeah. I don't know. The purple one could just be a big bitch, too. Like, yeah, real she's tall. got a big butted bitch, you know? Yeah. yeah. Or, or, yeah, a giant, uh, you know? So Tucker's pretty pissed about these M&Ms. And I, I think that. he'll be happy that they have decided to shelf the woke M&Ms, and they've brought on everybody's favorite racially ambiguous actress, uh, Maya Rudolph, uh, to be the new spokesperson. And they said, who could hate hmm. Maya Rudolph? Everyone loves Maya Rudolph. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have to say something here. I'm not a Maya Rudolph fan. Mm, I'm a Maya Rudolph from like 1999 fan. She was hot when she had that big afro and the fucking, she looked like Sade, you know, with the black freckles and shit. She was mm -hmm. fucking sexy. Now she's a big fucking bloated bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, I agree. But who gives a shit? They're fucking M&Ms. All right. Winners and losers this week before we go to the Patreon. Patreon, I don't know what we're going to talk about. Maybe uh, Tim Allen pulling his dick out and showing it to Pam Anderson. Mm. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe uh, Jesus Christ on the cross. It's possible. We talk about, as you put it, Jesus Christ on the cross. <laughs> Uh-oh, we just got banned again because Shane's fighting with religious people. Um, when uh, is, actually, I'm, 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 I'm not fighting with religion. I'm just fighting with black people. Jesus, you got to watch that, man. <laughs> ah, dude, I'm trying to get us banned, dude. Come on. If I could tell you the amount of times in the first year of this show, Shane would get drunk and go. It's just not fair how we treat the inner cities. No, it's not. Oh, yeah. I know, but someone's going to listen to the first time, listen to this for the first time and go, that one guy can't read for shit, me, and the other guy <laughs> screams about the blacks and Arabs a lot. Well, dude, I'm trying to, uh, you know, it's satire. That's the whole thing. <laughs> uh, that I think you need to establish it after you do it more. You would be like, oh, the blacks, and then just go, satire. I don't know. That's how the onion does it, isn't it? It's like, uh, uh, where the fucking onion? It's in the name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Winners and losers this week. Uh, losers, Tucker Carlson. I'm sorry, bud. Mm. Losers, Justin Roiland. Uh, two mm, guys with Christ. weird sexual fetishes. One likes fucking candies and one likes fucking kids. Apparently, I don't know. Allegedly. Um, winners. Ugh. Do we even have any winners this week? That big bitched Eminem. 
<laughs> uh, that guy on Color Instagram. B&B. The guy on Instagram that got you booted. He won. Uh, dude, he's fucking winning the long run. He thinks he's going to heaven. That's a good point. Um, do you have winners and losers this week, or is that good? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I got a winner. Me. There you go. <laughs> you got a loser? Yeah. Me. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. For being partnered with you. All right. <laughs> All right. Go to yourworstfriend.com. Follow us everywhere at Worst Friend Cast and go to patreon.com slash Worst Friend Cast. You get every episode entirely commercial free, every episode ever recorded, and you get a bonus episode every week. For your worst friend, I am Matt. I am leaving. You're banned. Thanks for listening. I don't want to be banned. <laughs>